Hello, I am Joel Bloom at New Jersey Institute of Technology. We pride ourselves on being part of the newer community and its advancements in technology, the economy, and the growth of the city. That's why we are very proud to partner with the Caucus Educational Corporation to produce Newark at the Crossroads right here on the NGIT campus. We hope you enjoy this special series. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by New Jersey Institute of Technology, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, Barnabas Help, Life is Better Healthy, TD Bank, Josh S. Weston, The Fidelco Group, and by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, welcome to uh, Newark at a Crossroads from the campus of NJIT. We're here at the Jim Wise uh, Auditorium. We are pleased to be joined by Latha Reddy, who is the Vice President of Corporate Social Responsibility and President of the Prudential Foundation at Prudential. Good to see you, Latha. Thank you. It's great to be here. You know, uh, you cannot talk about the city of Newark without talking about Prudential. You've been here for, what, about four or five years? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> more like 140. Yeah, right? 140 years. 140. And Prudential had options and could have left and stayed because. Well, you know, we were founded here, and uh, the city's been good to us. So we rose and fall with the times of the city, and we knew that because of what we benefited from the city that we needed to give back. And so at critical moments in time, our leadership decided that it was important for us to stay and now to double down. So we've been here the entire time. Yeah, when you talk about doubling down, there's a uh, uh, pretty big building. Yes. It's a $444 million project that's happening uh, the Prudential operation, the Prudential Tower, is going to add to the Newark skyline. It's going to be really important. But let's talk about the investment that you and your colleagues have been making in the city and the people, particularly the children. Mm -hmm. Talk about the children and the commitment Prudential has made to these children, getting them ready, not just for school, but for life. That has been a big part of our work over the last 40-some years, and we've done it both at the systemic level, so working right with the city, with the school district, on how we can improve educational outcomes for all kids. And we've done that in ways that look at leadership issues. We've done that in wraparound holistic services, so right, how we can provide uh, all the supports that kids need to be successful. And we do that to this day in different ways. We also bring to bear the distinct capabilities within our enterprise to support residents and children of Newark. And so we're actually planning uh, an event for some high school students who are doing a week-long intensive program with the city uh, that prepares them for college and their experiences there and will prepare them to be successful uh, in school and after. And so we are working with our staffing organization, uh, our communications organization, and others to prepare kids with skills that they'll need to think about as they enter college and beyond. You know, it's interesting, in, in full disclosure, uh, people who watch public broadcasting know that we're into disclosing. Uh, the foundation has been very supportive of a program we do called Stand and Deliver. Um, the Caucus Educational Corporation primarily produces programming for PBS stations in the region, particularly WNET and uh, NJTV. But the other part of what we do is leadership development. And we created a program 15 years ago called Stand and Deliver, teaches communication leadership uh, skills for young people disproportionately in the city of Newark. Mm -hmm. um, and Prudential Foundation has been a big supporter of that. When you look at young people in this city, what would you say the primary needs they have would be? Well, it's a variety of supports. So a lot of it uh, starts at home. And so having families who have the wherewithal to uh, work with their right, parents are kids first teachers. So how can they support their students, their ch children at home? The other is making sure that the schools they're attending have the supports that they need, whether it's the resources to provide the services, right? the teachers in the classroom, everything starts there, uh, the school leadership at the principal level. And so making sure that the quality of the professionals that the young people are interacting with are what we need to help improve the outcomes. 
they were all looking for. Uh, the other piece of it is, again, the holistic supports. So how do we develop the, the skills that young people need to be not just successful in school, but successful in life? You back up a little bit, because uh, the Prudential Foundation not only supports individual nonprofits like ours that run programs that directly coach, train, mentor young people, mm -hmm. but you support the schools themselves. Like, they, you're very actively involved in the educational system. Make that clear to folks, because people sure. would say, well, why would a corporation be directly involved in the educational system? Aren't they separate? You don't see it that way. Well, we, we are separate from the system. Well, absolutely. you're separate, but you are, you're engaged. Correct. We are fully engaged. And, you know, what we do is we get behind leadership. So we know that that's what makes the difference, right? We are a country, a, rather a company of people of talent, right? We're a right. financial services company, and that's where we place our bet is on the people that we, we employ. And so similarly, when we're looking to work with organizations or systems, we're looking for talent, and we're looking for vision and for strategy and execution. And so in that way, we know that, uh, you know, we can get behind leaders who are looking to move the needle. And so we as an institution feel that, you know, we have a responsibility, right? We have a set of capabilities, a set of resources. We are here in the city. We're part of the community. We want to help, you know, propel the city into the future and be everything that we know it can be. And so part of that is working with the education system and supporting what, what the leaders are trying to do there. Yeah, the other thing is I was looking at some of the programs and I was looking at some of the interesting things that uh, you're involved in. And one of the things that struck me is that... Um, the Prudential Foundation supports a whole range of organizations, but, but one of the things that struck me is I'm sitting there going, you gave an example, and, and help me make sense of this. Mm -hmm. For example, a small coffee shop on Halsey Street may need help attracting customers because of the expertise Prudential uh, employees here can help the owner put together a successful marketing strategy to attract new customers. That's the role of a corporation like Prudential? Sure. So, you know, Prudential and other corporations, right, we exist to serve society in many ways. And first and foremost are the products that we put out for our customers. But, you know, we also know that we have a real value proposition in terms of our whole uh, chain of services, right, and expertise within the company. And so we like to bring that to bear on whatever we do. And Halsey Street is a great example. So with the decision to build the new tower, right, we are redeveloping two major tracts of land in the heart of downtown, right on Broad Street. So that in and of itself is a contribution to the city's development, Big. right? But we also know there's more we can do. And so we're trying to integrate the physical structure of the tower in a more seamless, lay, seamless way into the community. And it gave us a chance to really look around and continue the work that we've been doing for decades, um, but really to build a continuum of support along the whole Halsey Street corridor. So starting at the south end of Broad Street and working our way down now to the north side of Broad Street, which is where our tower will be located, and looking at the businesses there and helping to support them and so that they can benefit from all the redevelopment that's happening. I community. never even thought about that. So because Prudential has that degree of expertise internally, you go to these smaller businesses, they don't have a vice president of marketing, a vice president of this, strategic planning. You're saying that because you have those resources, you can be helpful to those around the Prudential Tower, which makes what goes on in the tower and ultimately in the city more successful. Absolutely. We know that we can be the most impactful when we bring a multitude of resources to bear. So obviously we have financial resources and we do make grants through the Prudential Foundation, as you said. We also make other corporate contributions. But when we couple that with the expertise of our employees, and in this case, the marketing support sure. that we have internally, we know that it can, we can really have a much more sustainable lasting impact. It's interesting. Uh, before I let you out of here, I've been asking people like Clement Price, Dr. Clement Price and, uh, you know, some of Cammie Anderson, the superintendent of schools, and so many others. But I want to ask you from a corporate and social um, responsibility point of view from the corporate world, how optimistic people are about the future of the city as we are, in fact, at a crossroads here on the campus of uh, NGIT. How optimistic are you about the future of the city of Newark? I am very optimistic about the future of You're the city. You're bullish because? Because when you look around, you see all the assets we have in the city, right? The people, the places, we've got universities, we've got the port, we've got all sorts of transportation hubs here. There's no reason why we can't be as successful as the next city. Totally confident. Totally. 140 years in the city of Newark Prudential and uh, cannot imagine where the city would be without Prudential. Thank you so much, Lava. Pretty Thank much you. Appreciate it. We're from the uh, campus of NJIT. We're talking about Newark at the uh, crossroads. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Thanks so much. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, 
Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're pleased to be joined by Dr. Dario Cortez, who is the president of Berkeley College. Good to see you, Dario. Good to see you, Steve. For those of uh, our folks watching uh, who haven't seen you before or do not know the expansive nature of Berkeley, go ahead, tell them where it is. Well, Berkeley College, we have 10 campuses, uh, one of them being online. We're located in New Jersey and New York. Uh, Great City in New York has one of our campuses uh, right on Broad Street. Yeah. And, you know, because we're doing this at Norcote at a Crossroads series here at your colleague, uh, colleague's place, uh, Dr. Bloom. Yeah, a good, a good friend and colleague. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about this. Very committed to urban revitalization, Berkeley. Very committed, not only here in Newark, but in Brooklyn as well. You've got a big operation there. Why is Berkeley so committed to building up urban communities? Because also, not only there, but Patterson, Passaic, you got a lot going on there. Go ahead. Absolutely. Brooklyn, you know, Midtown, uh, et cetera. That's right. Uh, we're committed. Uh, we, we believe uh, in urban education. Uh, I think it's a, the, the future. Uh, many of our populations live in the surrounding area, the taxpayers that like to live in the community. Uh, the TOPS program, uh, the Transfer Opportunity Program scholarship with the community college is, is a good example. With Essex Community College. Essex is another college. Oh. Essex is another college right here in Newark. Go ahead. Absolutely, Essex Community College. 50% of all students in this country are in community colleges. So we developed a scholarship with a community college, not only the Essex, Passaic, Bergen Community College in New York City as well. Uh, and the point is that we can transfer those students uh, seamless into our four-year degree program. Mm -hmm. So the students graduate from Essex, uh, almost 79 of them already transfer. Uh, we give them the, the scholarship, 25 to 50 percent, uh, provided by Berkeley College, in order for them to fulfill and complete their baccalaureate education. It, and what's exciting about that program is that the retention and graduation rate is very high. The students already are mature, they're seasoned, they come in, they, they don't have to, you know, get all the credits, totally, all 90 credits are transfer. They come into the junior year, and then they graduate, and they go right into the jobs. That's, that's what advantage. we do. Tremendous event. You know, we've been longtime partners with Berkeley, so we've had a lot of these conversations both on the air and off. But you've often said, Dario, that, um, that Newark is, is a college town, that Newark has great potential to be that college town. And some folks question that. They go, look, there's a lot of colleges there. There's Berkeley, there's NJIT, there's Rutgers, there's Seton Hall, there's Essex County College, right? Did I get them all? Yeah, just about. Okay. But they're all just colleges, and they're there. It's a, it's a lot of students. What does it really take to make a great college town? Because you've been in other places. Oh, absolutely. Your, your higher ed experience is all over this country. What does it take to make a great college town? Well, really, uh, the, the Richards Triangle Park in, in North Carolina started with three universities, uh, you know, NC State, UNC Chapel Hill, and Duke University. And they created the biggest research triangle park in the world. It creates, uh, colleges create economic development. It, it brings jobs, it brings opportunities. Uh, we educate students. There's over 50,000 students in the city of Newark. 50,000? Right, it doesn't even count the K through 12. So when you think about it, as, as educators who we are, we're really educating K through 12 all the way through college, graduate and doctorate. Uh, we offer the baccalaureate degree, but we are uh, the key to uh, economic development. Mass transportation is in Newark. We have NJ Pack. We have corporations uh, like Prudential. And right. We have, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have uh, IDT. We have significant uh, sectors in the economy that creates jobs and opportunities. Uh, at Berkeley, for example, we require internships for all our students. That means they're going to work here in the community. Go talk about that. Absolutely, they work in the community. Uh, they they want to get the jobs in the community. They want to live in the community. They create uh, the, the future. It's a renaissance. Uh, same thing happened in many countries, uh, not, not only countries, but many states. Look at NYU and, uh, you know. You know that well. Uptown, uh, in downtown with Columbia. You know, you have NYU downtown, Columbia uptown, and you have places like in Westchester. It's also economic development going on. Well, talk about the Brooklyn thing you're all involved in there. Oh, that, that's very exciting, Steve. Uh, uh, there are 11 institutions in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. Higher ed institutions? Higher ed institutions, uh, NYU, Poly, uh, Pratt, uh, you have uh, LIU, St. Joseph, uh, et cetera. There are a number, Berkeley College. Right. Uh, we got together, the college presidents, and said, let's create a triangle uh, pack. 
with technology. Uh, so we, uh, with a non-for-profit, organized an event that brought in faculty, students, uh, new companies, and there's more jobs in technology in Brooklyn, according to the Bloomberg report, than in Manhattan. More, hold on. In Brooklyn, there are more jobs in the technology field than in Manhattan? In the emerging technologies, in the industry of technology, there's more emerging technologies in Brooklyn today in the last five years than it was, uh, that it is in New York today, in New York City today. In New York City? New York City, Manhattan. Okay, but here's my question then. That exciting initiative is going on in Brooklyn. How much of what is going on there could be replicated in the city of New York? Well, we, we began that conversation with the president of uh, NJIT, uh, right, also with, with Dr. Bloom, who was here earlier, uh, with Rutgers, uh, with Essex Community College, and others, uh, Pillar College, also in New York, a small school. Uh, and what we want to do is find what brings the economic development in this great city. Uh, we got to look at the sectors that in, in the city of New York. We need to look at how we can partner with them to create uh, Public safety is one of the major issues, according to the mayor. We provide. What is it? Public safety. Health, oh, public safety. And by the way, Berkeley has a big program in criminal justice and the whole bit, but keep going. Uh, absolutely. So, it, the, how do we attract people to want to come, work, and live in the city of New York? How do we provide them with the opportunities to work and entertain, to have the retail possibilities, to have in Japan the cultural activities? All that is part of the creating a community. Uh, we have incredible uh, transportation systems. You know, you can be in Manhattan, you know, in 20 minutes. That's you, right. You can be anywhere. Uh, so I think that that and the colleges are really the engine for that opportunity. Uh, and I think working closely with our partners in the chambers, with the, uh, the mayor of New York, with the superintendent of schools, we can create that partnership to develop the opportunities for the future. Terry, did you, did you envision, because you, again, have been, tell folks real quickly where you have been in higher ed before I ask you this question. Oh, I've been everywhere. Uh, Wisconsin, Maryland, Virginia, um, FIT in New York City, a lot, of places. Uh, so a lot of places. So here's my question. Did you, did you know that being a president, the top person at a college would entail you being this involved in economic development? Did you know that all along? Not when you first start, but I think you realize as a leader in higher education, as an educator, that we really need to provide uh, not only role models, but the opportunity to work with our corporate partners, with our educational partners, with, with every district uh, in every sector of the economy to make a difference. And I think it's not only just for the college, but it's for the city uh, mm -hmm. and the state and the nation. We are the providers of leaders for the future. The 21st century is dependent that we educate our students beginning, uh, you know, in kindergarten all the way up through college and beyond. Well, Berkeley College is playing a key role as uh, Newark faces this very challenging and interesting crossroads. I want to thank you, Dario, for being our partner and partners with NJIT in, in, this, uh, in this effort. So thanks, Dario. Thank you very much. Stay Appreciate right it. There. We'll be back from the campus of NJIT right after this. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Mr. Don Wright joins us for the first time um, on public television. He is uh, Vice President of Operations, United Airlines for Newark and New York. Good to see you, Don. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you, it. You've been with this company for a while? Been with the company for 26 years. And in 2010, United and Continental merged? Yes, we did. And we're talking about uh, your operation. We're talking about Newark International Airport, right? And we're doing this in the context of our series called Newark at a Crossroads. What is the importance or what is the significance of an airport or that particular airport to the city from your perspective? I think there's a huge significance. You know, if we look at our operation there, uh, we are the largest carrier in Newark, in New Jersey, and the New York met uh, metropolitan area. And with that, uh, you've got to know that we bring in more people from more cities around the world uh, on more flights than any other carrier. Uh, we bring them into Newark. More than anyone? More than anyone. And, you know, those people uh, are, uh, we bring tourism in, uh, business, investment, 
dollars, and that makes it a very uh, important economic engine in their so, region. And le but let me ask you: Was the you had the LA assignment at LAX, right? I did. That was that the last assignment before you came into Newark. Yeah, I, I was actually managing director of the technical side, technical operations uh, there, and had Asia Pacific. Okay, let me ask you: Los Angeles, major American city; Newark, an American city. What would you say, because the struggle, the challenge, and the opportunities are there in both places, mm -hmm. the biggest difference other than size between L.A. and Newark? You know, for us, this is a much larger, larger hub operation. And, uh, you know, we feed to over 150 different destinations, 70 of them international. So Newark, for us, is a global gateway. A global gateway? Absolutely. Break, break that down so people understand. You fly to where? Well, we fly to 70 different international destinations and, and 150 other destinations direct. Plus, of course, you know, we, we operate over 5,000 flights a day with United. So not only are we uh, arriving and departing about 60% of the people through Newark, 40% of the people are connecting out to other destinations. So it truly is a global gateway. Now, what's interesting is, is it true that you came on board in about January? I did, yes. Uh, snow involved? A little bit. Yeah, the, the weather was different uh, and Different? Is that the word you're going with? By the uh, way, you, you do not have a New Jersey accent. I just picked that up. No, I, I raised, uh, born and raised in Australia. Um, so the snow is new to me. But I, I have to tell you, it, it, to sit there and watch uh, an operation as complex as our operation uh, through that uh, severe weather is right. really impressive and, and a credit to the people that we have with us. We have 13,000 people based in New Jersey. It's an enormous 000. operation. And you talk about teamwork, uh, to see 13,000 people, 400 flights a day, consistently running uh, a great operation. It's really impressive. But the other thing that's interesting is that Continental before this merger and now United, what's always struck me is that <clears throat> you notice a lot of events you'll see sponsored by Continental, now sponsored by United. The commitment that United has to be involved in the community not just sponsoring things, but being engaged, involved, supportive. Is that a part of the culture to be involved? That's very important to Talk us. Talk about that. And very important that we're involved in the community, and we take it very seriously. You know, a good example would be uh, that they, we're the official airline for the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. We... Probably before you go any further, full disclosure, we're partners with NJ Pack. One-on-one from NJ Pack's being shot there in the fall. How'd you guys get involved with that? <laughs> Because we, we really want to get involved in the community and, and get involved in, in great programs that, that uh, we feel benefit the community. We've got a lot of employees that live in the area. Um, a lot of our customers live in the area. So we, we feel, you know, the arts and, and performing arts is something that we want to be involved in. We're, we're uh, a supporter of the Newark Museum, the New Jersey Food Bank. A uh, big supporter of uh, Newark's Beth Israel Hospital, for example. Absolutely. And some of the other stuff we do in the community, and we truly are very focused on um, being a good corporate citizen and being involved, but we have a great summer internship program in Talk New York. Talk about that. You know, we have local students, 18 to 25, uh, come out and spend the summer with us. It's a, it's a paid internship. Uh, it's really, really good. Not only do they come out and go through the customer service experience and learn how to deal with the customers, but we expose them to uh, the flight operations team, the, the aircraft maintenance team, and really get them to know not just an airline, but the aviation industry. And we have great support from our elected officials. So, you know, the mayor of Newark and the mayor of Elizabeth come out and talk to uh, this uh, intern team, which is fantastic. It's just a wonderful opportunity. We've been doing it for eight years, and we're going to continue doing it. It's just a great success. By the way, I, it's interesting. I, I told you that one of the first jobs I had out of graduate school I work for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which operates Newark Airport, right? Yes. And I worked at Newark Airport. And it was the overnight shift. And I went, it's called that graveyard shift, right? Mm -hmm. And I just saw a small little piece of what went on. I know my staff is sitting there saying, Steve actually had a real job that he had to, wasn't long, guys. Um, what blew me away was how many people from midnight to eight are running are involved in so many different aspects of that airport. This was back in the day, um, this was before Continental came, which was, I guess, in 1988. Yes. In 1988, it was people expressed it, people expressed it at the time. Give people a small sense, because you and I talked about the possibility of us coming out and shooting at the airport and doing some filming as to what, what it takes. 
I'm telling you, I saw this much. I couldn't even believe what it takes to run an airport. And I have no idea. You, you know, you can't run a great operation without a lot of preparation. Uh, and that for us is having a good plan and, and executing that plan every day is what we focus on. So we have, uh, and so does the Port Authority. So you're working, so the Port Authority runs the airport, you guys are the airline, and go ahead. We have to have, uh, and we do have a, a really good relationship, a long and strong uh, uh, relationship with the Port Authority. And that relationship has allowed us to, allowed our hub in Newark to evolve into, uh, uh, you know, the global gateway that I spoke about before, world-class uh, facility. And as I said before also, you know, it is a really big economic driver in the region. Uh, without that sort of relationship with the different authorities, including the Port Authority, the TSA, CBP, et cetera, uh, we wouldn't have the success that we by, have today. By the today. way, real quick, before I let you go, where does Newark Airport fit into the larger picture of airports around this country? Uh, How for, do we rank? Are we one of the bigger ones? Oh, absolutely we oh, are. we are? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what? For us, we have seven hubs in United's network, and we have a fantastic head, uh, network. But um, I like to think of uh, Newark as definitely one of the, the, cruels, the jewels in that crown, for sure. So listen, for folks who, uh, you know, uh, were part of the Continental team, and now they're part of the United team, that happened in 2010. It's been a smooth merger? Uh, you know, we've had our challenges. Uh, together now. But, but it, you know, it was, it was a perfect marriage, if you will, but even in a perfect marriage, you have your challenges to work through as you harmonize things. A lot of the processes for us uh, are clearly uh, are safety driven and process driven and uh, procedural and, and have regulatory issues there. So we, we work and we get through it. We've made a lot of progress and I'm we have sorry some milestones to go. There. I'm sorry, I promise we're coming out to Newark Airport. We're going to go on a tour and you're going to show us how it's done. I look forward Don to Wright it. Don Wright from uh, United uh, Airlines, thanks so much for joining us. Good stuff. Thank you. That was great. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by New Jersey Institute of Technology, Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Josh S. Weston, The Fidelco Group, and by PSE&G. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. At Barnabas Health, nothing is more important than your health. So we've assembled an enormous array of resources to heal those in need of care. Doctors, nurses, amazing technology. Yet for all we do to heal the sick, we do as much to strengthen the healthy. With innovative programs designed in the hope that you won't need our extraordinary medical care, in the first place. Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy.